Hello and welcome to episode 2 of the $10 team. Appreciate those of you who watched the first episode where we kind of went through the starter packs and talked about some of the guys that we got in that group and uh, would maybe keep here. We're going to break this down between offense. I said offense and defense. Offense and pitching, uh, obviously. So it'll be two separate videos. We should be able to get through the offense here today because we're not getting everybody. There's some guys that we're definitely keeping. So... Hopefully it doesn't get too long. I know the first one was a bit long. In fact, somebody even requested maybe shortening them. I totally understand that. Let's kind of keep it manageable. And if it does get to be uh, a bit much, then maybe I'll break it down into, let's see, we need six, seven, eight. We need like nine, ten guys. So maybe it's a five and five if it gets too lengthy, depending on uh, how we're searching. When we ended last episode, we had 13,000 points, as you can see in the upper right corner just above the camera. We now have 17,416. So that means we got uh, 4,416 uh, points just in the days since, uh, si since we last did a video. I looked at today, you go get transaction history, just on, just on performance alone, that we got 900 points. Just if you look from, now this is a little bit different than it will be in a normal day during the league because don't forget entry pool, which is where you start, runs 24-7. So you're getting achievements all day long, even if they're small, 20s, 30s, knickknacks. But we got 900 points today. If you just look at April 3rd, that's pretty good. And that's another reason why I suggest that if you're going to create a team, especially if you're going to do a team no money, you create it as close to Monday as you can so you get that full period in the entry pool. It really is the smartest to do it on Monday morning. Right after the leagues have started, everything's kicked off for the new league set, then you start your team. Say say 11 uh, a.m. noon central time, uh, you should be safe there. Maybe even a little bit early. I think, I think leagues start up at 9 a.m. central on Mondays. So you would be safe there. But uh, yeah, just make sure that the new league has started and that way you've got that whole time and entry pool. Again, particularly if you're doing Team Noni. We're doing a $10 team, so I didn't feel as bad starting uh, you know, a couple days ago in the middle of the week. I am debating again because I want to do another, another series that is going to be uh, written out at Fangraphs that I'm going to be doing and talking about that. And I wonder if... I really should wait till Monday. I kind of wanted to get it started over the weekend and have those pieces ready for Monday and Tuesday. But it would make sense. Maybe I'll do a, a you know ten dollar team for that too. So I'm putting in some points so I can cut the uh, cut the time needed in entry pool. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Let's stop wasting time. Let's get into this now. Uh, just a quick look at the stats here. We're not going to go through every single stat of, of what's going on, but just in the games that we've played, we see some of the ones, some of the players that we knew we were going to keep anyway are beasting. JD Martinez, unsurprisingly, killing it. You can see here now, it will default to this, where you'll have uh, the game log, and once you get into a league, it will have games there. I like the splits. I like to jump in, immediately see righty versus left, versus righty versus lefty. You know, he's hanging hanging in there against righties and he's absolutely demolishing lefties you love to see it jd martinez will be our dh that's locked and loaded he will not be in the outfield though so he is for this because it doesn't matter i don't mind his his putrid defense but we can't have that when we, once we get into a league as you can see minus 5.3 on the zone rating uh minus 0.9 and right really bad stuff here doesn't make a ton of errors, but that's not really what you worry about in the outfield. You worry about not being able to get to stuff, and he won't. So that does make things difficult with the Robertson-Joe Judge combo because, as you can see, they're two of our other good players here. Judge has been fantastic. He's hitting very well. Now, he has a sharp platoon split. Lefty's been busting him up, but only 60 plate appearances. So I'm reluctant to believe that that is that this is who he is against lefties. He's also sticking around, though he may be kind of a part-timer sort of fill-in guy. Um, unless I could, oh man, I, st I still, I don't think I could teach him another position. I just, it's so bad, like, where would we put him? Meanwhile, Robertson um, has had the opposite. He's actually obliterating lefties and struggling a little bit against righties. But I think these numbers will improve 
You don't want to overjudge things based on small samples. And even 237 plate appearances, while not a tiny sample, is still not enough to be like, well, he can't hit righties, and therefore he should be cast aside. In fact, let's look at our numbers. You see I, I did split versus right. You can get a little bit more detail here and see 235 Babbitt. So he's probably been a bit unlucky. Um, I also like, I'll have to do my, uh, I'll have to do my custom report because I like to have the strikeout walk, uh, strikeout and walk ratios. Edit views here. I'm going to create my own view and you can also put WRC plus, which is just a little bit of a more detailed and, and more precise version of OPS plus. All in all, they're not that different. And if you have one, you're fine. If you if you have OPS plus, you're fine. But I like WRC plus, so I'll have that. I'll have strikeout rate, walk rate as a percentage. Just easier for me to interpret. You know, I see 54 percent or 54 strikeouts, and 237 plate appearances, 23 percent. My my brain does not just do that off rip. It's gotten pretty easy on the percentage for me to just get it off rip. So. We could still sell Bob Robertson, put Joe Judge at first base, and get, you know, upwards of 1,600 points. Let's see if he's on the market right now. He is, and this one's going for 1,600 slash 1,775. We could undercut that so that we're the cheapest on the market. I wouldn't be averse to that. Then Judge at first. And uh, and Jose or Jose J D Martinez at D H because I'm 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 just I'm not I'm not sitting Judge and there's no other place for him to play so I think I'm I need to make a decision there he's not going to bring as much uh, money points if you will sometimes I call it money you just know I'm talking about po points it's not going to bring in the kind of uh, scratch that that Robertson will. Oh, I just did the same thing twice. I'm an idiot. I meant to do this. You know, he's expensive for a silver, but not as expensive. I think I think we sell Robertson. I think, if I'm being honest, if he was crushing righties, I probably wouldn't be doing this. I, I, I am giving him a little bit of short shrift because of his, uh, of his troubles against righties, even though I know... That it's not ind indicative of his inability to hit righties. He is better against lefties, but it's really not that much. Like this is the biggest gap here. This uh, pun intended, I guess. This ten points of gap power, but you're only talking about uh, eight points here on the overall power. The eye is with well, twelve points. That's something. So I mean, those are two differences, two double digit differences. But again, shouldn't be. Something that says that he's 84 and 161. Those are almost, I mean, that's almost uh, a doubling of production as far as OPS plus goes. So I'm going to sell him, but I want you to know, Bob Robertson, since I know you're watching this, this is not because I think you're bad. This is just something we got to do. We'll put him up. He might not even sell either, in which case. We, we keep him. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to put $15.55, $16.69. Somebody can buy him outright. It's a fair price. It's a good card. But we're making the move. Okay? And now we can do this. Do that. Put Seth Brown, who's actually been raking, albeit in a very limited sample. He has 37 plate appearances all told. And uh, he's crushing, but like with a 360 Babbitt, like let's not freak out. But he's doing the damn thing. You know, good for him. Good for him. All right. And then we don't want Almedo signs or UL Washington taking any of JD's time. All right. So we've got that. Uh, I'm going to go New Age, where your best hitter's batting two. We'll put JD there. Ethan Allen's raking. You're going to bat four. I don't know why I'm giving this so much attention. It doesn't matter. We're about to blow this team up. Okay, so we've got Judge at first. Robertson on the block. JD at DH. We said we keep Ellie Rodriguez at least as a backup catcher. 
He has not done that well, but again, he's our backup right now. That's all I'm really concerned about. Um, he's throwing out batters at a 34% clip. That's pretty good. The defense looks like it's it's solid, um, despite not a massive set of metrics here, because this can go up to, I think like well over 100 because some guys are like 120 but that's fine and then oh ethan allen is playing too he's sticking around he's going to be the left fielder so we can flip these two not that it again not that it really matters i didn't need to do that can signs play the outfield insofar as he can play anything not really we'll do that whatever Whatever. Again, I'm, I'm focused on particulars that don't matter. Let's start getting into the market. Let's go find our starting catcher. Because that is important now. Now that we know that Ellie is not going to be on the squad. Let's, um, let's go 75 or higher. Because we're going to focus. Actually, hang on. I'll do 70. But they better be pretty good defensively. Only show cards I can afford. Actually... No, because I don't need them to show cards for 17000 because we're not paying that. Let's put a max of... Let's put a max of 4000 knowing that we're probably not going to pay that, but we want some of those guys to come up That because um, I think it puts the buy now at a max of 4000 And then if the sell now, or if the starting bid is lower, we can kind of jump in on the cheap. Let's also do this. Do the eBay style. Buy some guys who are about to finish up and maybe uh, maybe snake something nicely here. Nope, don't want that. Oh, geez. That goes all the way back to there? I didn't know that. Actually, I should have. I, all I hit was that. You don't hit the back button. I think we're going to exclude live right now. Ooh, Sean Murphy has some good defense, though. It'd be nicer if he was the backup. If we had the starter locked in and he was the backup, I'd be more inclined to do that. Uh, let's see here. Oh, that's a cool card art. I like that red with that black background. That's pretty nice. All right, let's 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 get rid of live for a moment. Just for a moment. Oh, Sandy Alomar. I liked Sandy Alomar. I thought he had better defense. His hitting's exquisite. That's some really good hitting. We'd be sacrificing the defense, though. And I don't know if I want to do that at catcher. In fact, I'd be more inclined to go the other route. Where I give up some of the uh, offense in favor of somebody who can really pick it back there. Because that can really go a long way, I've noticed. Where if you have a stud catcher, Dave Nielsen, I remember him. He played like everywhere but catcher. I mean, he was ostensibly uh, a catcher, but... I believe he played like a lot of right field and other positions. Let me look real quick. Because that's just what we're going to do. So we're going to have baseball reference and fan graphs pulled up. Because you know we're going to be looking at some other players, y'all. You already know. Let me do this real quick. Let me do that. And that. Bing, bang, boom. Boom. Gotta do that. Sorry. Uh, all right. Scan down real quick. I spent most of his time at catcher. Okay. You know what I might have been thinking of is another uh, brewer. Might have been thinking of BJ Serhoff. He played a good bit in the outfield and first base, but I thought it was. I thought, I thought he kind of got from out from behind. Actually, no. I, I stand by that. Because his first three years, catching. And then hardly ever, ever again. Okay, yeah. I am thinking about the right guy. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We're not putting him on the team, Paul. Stop focusing on shit that doesn't matter. Golly. Back to the player pool here. Let's find somebody with that slick defense. So I can show you guys kind of what we're dealing with. When it's at the high end. Because it can be pretty insane. I don't know some of these guys. So I'm clicking on some of these guys. And you may know who they are. And you're like, that guy's not going to be good defense. I don't know all these names. Dave Ingle. That's one of the things I love about this game. Is learning about players. 
that I'm not familiar with at all. Like, I know a lot of players. Weird flex, I know. But some of these guys, I'm like, who the freak is that? Ew, 25 defense, no way. I say we got to at least be light green on the defense. Like 50 would be the lowest, and you'd have to be this good of a hitter. So it's like Alomar is the low end that we would take. We're really looking for something. Now, if you're going to get a defensive catcher, you're going to have to pay, though. They charge a premium for him. This is funny that he's available tonight. This is really funny because I just told a story on um, Twitter. Uh, there was one of those things floating around. You know, there's so much stuff, so many of these memes floating around um, about different things like name, all the jobs you had, name where you've worked, name four players that mean a lot to you uh, in baseball, and then tag four other people to do the same. I did Curtis Granderson, Justin Verlander, Corey Kluber, and Mike McFarland. Somebody's like, Mike McFarland, but why? And uh, I brought up how my first year as a full-time fantasy player in my dad's league. My dad's league was my introduction to fantasy baseball. They started it in, I believe, 89. 10-team AL only at my dad's work. Bunch of uh, people that worked with him and my mom and one of the other uh, dude's wives. And before you want to go, I'm going to cut you all off if you want to get some sexist at all. Both those ladies won the league multiple times. And it wasn't because the dudes didn't know what they were doing. These ladies knew what was up. My mom is a huge sports fan. She was a boss. She won three different times. And Susie, the other uh, lady in there, won definitely once because she had Pedro in 99 uh, and 2000. But she only won one of those two. She might have won another time, but a different season. Anyway, my first time in. I forget if it was 92 or 93. So it was right around when this card was. And uh, I'm telling my dad, I was like, I can do it. You know, I've been watching guys forever. I play in my own little league with my friends. I know what's up. I know the players. I got this. We had this thing called the USA. Well, it still exists. The USA Today Baseball Weekly. Now it's called Sports Weekly. Had something called the Leviathan, their big fantasy edition that came out. And it was, you know, 25 pages, just chock full of great fantasy info that me, my mom, and my dad all used. We loved it. It was great. I believe it still exists. And recently, as like last year, I don't know about this year because. Fantasy kind of got canceled in the middle of March, which is usually when it comes out. And uh, so, you know, I got my, I got that. I got some other stuff. There's no internet, y'all. Um, and I'm ready. I got my notes. And in the fifth round of the draft, I very confidently took Mike McFarland. I say, eh, Mike McFarland. And my dad shoots me this death stare from across the room. Like, uh, he's sitting, like, over there, and I'm over here on the couch. I think my mom's next to me. My dad's over there, and he's like, the fuck you just say? Mike McFarland, doggy. It was way too high of a pick. Fifth round. Because even if it was 93, which was his good year, his best his best full season here, I'll even show you guys. Even if it was that season, that's still too high for Mike McFarland. Like, this was a good year. 20 homers. 273 average. That's pretty good. Um, it was one of these two years. I just can't remember which. And even this year is not terrible. In fact, I think I have... Uh, oh, no, I forgot where I had the catchers pulled up. No, not here. Neither justified a fifth-round pick in an AL-only 10-team league. But anyway, that's my, my, my Mike McFarland story. He's been a family meme ever since. They love to bring it up. My dad will make a joke anytime he can about, oh, you're probably just going to draft Mike McFarland, huh? Maybe I am, Dad. Maybe I freaking am. Okay, here we go. Here's some defense. Jim Sundberg. Now, somebody's trying to go double the price that he normally goes for. I can pay a little bit extra. I'm not against doing that. But double? Not going to catch me doing that, y'all. Now, this person. Here we go. Nine hundo. And we wouldn't even have to buy it outright. 900 on a 700 average the last seven days. I could do that. That I could do. And I think I want to go defense heavy here at catcher. And I don't know why I checked Greg Myers again. I already knew that he was terrible. 
I think I want to. I think I want to go for this. Oh, I like this power eye combo though. Oof. But he's not necessarily cheap or anything. I think I'm gonna go for this Sunberg now. The risk of putting in an order, you know, putting in a bid, is that somebody just scoops him out from underneath us and pays the nine hundo. I wonder if it's prudent to just do that and not risk losing out on him. You know, it's really not that much of our budget. So, it seems like that'd be okay. No? Let me see here. Let's go. 900, 17, 4, 16. It's 5% of our budget. We're going to get the uh, buzzer to come up to say we have another game here. Probably just going to go ahead and cancel that out so it doesn't come up. Although, actually, no, I should leave it on. Because if it comes up too many more times, that means I'm going too slow. So we'll go ahead and download it after after this two seconds here when it comes up. I think I'm gonna just buy Sunberg, y'all. Like I said, it's only 200 bucks more points, more than his average. It's not out of, out of bounds. I love the defense back there. The hitting isn't great. It's not what we're getting him for. He's got an above average eye though. He's got a little bit of gap power. We bat him ninth. We want him out back there, improving the catching, uh, improving the pitchers via his defense, throwing out runners. His speed is so horrible, though. Let's take a look at some of the live cards, just so we're doing our due diligence. Is there a specific? Oh, right here. Duh. Hello. Yellow. Let's see who else uh, might have some good defense. Posey. Okay. We'll download that. Hedges will too, but I mean, his hitting, I think, will be even worse than Sunberg's, to be honest. Yeah, that, that hitting is... That's rough. That's rough. Garver's gonna have bit beastly hitting, but bad, bad, bad catching. Okay. Alfaro, Alfaro's got a good arm, I believe. Yeah, so he's got a big arm, but bad eye, strikes out like crazy. That's just not. That's ripe for poor simulation there. Barnes, I've been a sucker for him in the past. In in real fantasy. Nah. We're not paying that. Who else? Who else? Actually, for this, we'll start by card value. Just to see what's what. I don't think Carson Kelly's great defensively. I think he's... Oh, okay. Pretty good, actually. It's the catcher ability that's good. Okay. Touche. Touche, Carson Kelly. Tucker Barnhart. Pretty good. Tucker Barnhart, I mean, he's 30 points lower than Sunberg. I think Sunberg was a 112 catching. Because the offense is kind of the same. But if the defense was a bit closer. Not to mention we'd have to put it in an order for Barnhart. Um, or pay virtually the same. So in that realm, might as well just get... Might as well just get uh, Sunberg. Murphy's intriguing, but again, not really saving anything. I think at this point, to get somebody else, I'd have to be finding some savings. And that's not really happening. Perez probably has some good catching ability. He does. A buck oh two. Big strikeout guy, but does have a decent eye and some pop. I could see doing the Perez thing. He's 488. That's not a bad price. So 
you know, you're talking like what, 68? Yeah. Um, I don't know why I was coming with 68. Uh, 488, 488 of 900, it's like over 50%. 54% of the price for not a bad, like 102 defense. Actually, let me check Sunberg again. Was he 102 defense or was he 112? One hundred two. Okay, so that's only twenty points difference than Barnhart, by the way. But the same as, same as Perez. Six speed, by the way, too. He's going to clog up the bases. Perez is pretty slow as well. I don't know. I think Perez might actually be the better investment here. I think all told. Perez is the way to go. I'm just looking at some other, or, or you know, going a little bit deeper here just to make sure. Ooh, what's Castro's defense like? Pretty solid. Strikes out a lot though. All right, Roberto Perez, I think is actually gonna make the squad here. I like the savings. Strikes out a lot, but he's got the eye. He's got some punch. He's still only a 30 speed, but that's actually a good bit faster than Sunberg. I want to do one other thing real quick. Change it to 5,000 just to see if anybody comes in. Again, not so much that they that we would pay 5,000, but to see um, if there's bid pricing underneath that. Pat Collins. I love that eye in the pop, but what better defense? Dick Deets. Elite hitter. Terrible, terrible defense. Might as well not even be a catcher, to be honest. Luis Campitano. I like that. That's solid across the board, but he's a little expensive. All right, Roberto Perez it is. Let's do it. Four eighty eight. Welcome to the squad. All right. Cross out Sunberg there. And let's go to second base. Let's do the same thing here. I'm trying to get silvers more so than anything else. So nobody's really ending anytime soon that could allow us to maybe snake something on the cheap. That's usually what I'm checking with the end time. You know, if somebody's really underpriced and, and then no one was bidding on them, you can get some good snipes. You know, this could be kind of an interesting card for um, a bench type. Because even though he's only got second base right now, you could kind of train him at some other spots. I, I believe Kelly Johnson played multiple spots over his career and I think we could slot him in there let's see where Kijo played let's, uh, whoops sorry tab in between all sorts of stuff here second left third a little bit of first so you know he wouldn't be a starter anyway in some decent seasons. This is 05 that we're looking at. This is a rookie year. Oh, seven, excuse me. Solid, solid year. I kind of like him. I always, I always liked using him in fantasy leagues. Um, from that, from that 07 to uh, probably through 11, because after this, after the big 10 year, I likely. Uh, Stuck with him, but 11 was was rough And then he kind of bounced around as a journeyman type Yeah, I think we're gonna put a bid in on him. We're not gonna go wild. I mean we can't even buy him out right here We'll put a bid in and we'll see if he comes through Put Johnson 
So this one's got him going for 750 with a 450 bid. Oh, David Johnson, this was the year he hit a billion home runs, huh? Nice. That defense sorks. All right, let's put in... If we could get him for 469 as a bench guy, I'd be cool with that. Let's see. We're at 296 right now. We'll see if that holds. If not, we're, we're leaving it. We're just putting that in. That's more of like a luxury buy because I like them. As a, you know, part of this is using players that, you, that you're a fan of. So that's what I want to do there, and that's why I'm going for him. Now, we are going to spend a decent bit somewhere. Definitely going to spend on an ace um, and an ace reliever, and then a premium hitter somewhere. Like, we've got our best hitter already in Jay Dizzle. And uh, maybe third base or shortstop. Maybe center field. Somewhere else we're going to get another premium hitter that is going to be, you know, upwards of 3500 to 6000 depending on how good they are and, and what we see. So I will keep that in mind. Joel Youngblood has a really cool... Uh, first off, he's got some nice pop. He has a really cool claim to fame. He was a player who played for two different teams in the same day. Let's see if I can quickly call up that info. Remember how I said I wanted to be quick and precise? And now looking up the fact that he played <laughs> for two teams in one day. Let's see. Um, it was 82. So we can see when he was drafted. And we're going to see games for both teams on the same day. So he becomes a expo. Boom. Plays for the Expos at, at the Cubs. At, oh, wait. The time's probably up here. I thought they listed the time of day. Day game. It says day game. Okay, we'll go with that. We at least got that. And then, you know, Chicago to Philly. Not too bad. He didn't play the full game. I mean, he didn't play the full game of the first one either. He got traded in the middle, I think. It was like, okay, I got to bounce. Deuces. Let me get over to Philly. And jump in for the Spos that night. How sick is that? And he went one for one. Come in, get a little base knock. You'll love it. So, hey, that's pretty cool. Now, this is his 1983 card that we're looking at. He must have hit mad bombs. 17. Almost a 500 slug. Okay, that's why he's getting such a, uh, such a nice power rating. Let me go back to it to show you guys. That's a hell of a power rating there. Don't really like anything else he does, though. I mean, the defense is sus. I want one of the I or the avoid case to be good when I'm getting somebody, generally speaking. You know, if there's some premium slugger, maybe we can overlook it. Although, usually a premium slugger might strike out, but then they're going to have, uh, they're going to take walks, you know, or they don't strike out. Uh, or they don't take walks, but they also don't strike out. You know, it's usually one or the other. It's rare that somebody would be would be bad at both and still be somebody that I desire. Ooh. Now, I like this card. I'm an Ian Kinsler fan, man. When the Tigers got him, I was excited. It really worked for what they needed. Remember, they had that real first base slash DH log jam there. And so uh, getting Kinsler on the squad was big. Could spend two G's on him. Contact is the little sus. But that power I and avoid K's. Somebody who maybe is hitting like 250, 260, but has an OBP upwards of 100 points higher. You dig that. Defense isn't bad either over second base. Got some speed and stealing capability. All right, he's a consideration. We could consider him. Put him down. Kinsler. He costs 2K, thereabouts. I want to bump this up to 6 again under the same idea of like somebody might be cheaper coming in on a bid now. Uh, no, not really. Let's do this real quick. 
Let's do 10K. Just just to see who's ending soon. Okay, nobody's ending soon. Kinsler's really the only one. What if we did, what if we did like nothing? Only show cards I could afford are most expensive. Wow, still he's the most, uh, the earliest ender. That's interesting. Just wanted to see. All right. Anybody else here in the uh, flashbacks that could interest us? Don Money's half of his price on the starting bid. Solid green everywhere. Has three positions. I don't want a team of super slow guys, though. We don't have to be burners. I'm not a big, like, I'm a bad base dealer and I'm going to be the show. We don't have to have everybody speeding all, all over the place, but I don't want a bunch of log jams either. Mm, I, I think we'll pass on that. Desi Relaford, I remember him. Mm, poor defense. I thought he was a better defender, to be honest. Jeff Kent. Jeff Kent's probably in the similar vein to this. Um, Kinsler, all told. It's a little bit different spread of, of the numbers, but the bottom line is about the same, which, of course, they're both 84s, so that makes sense. Not quite as fast, more contact, the power, the, the um, offense is a little, uh, the distribution is a little bit different, defense a little bit worse. Between the two, I'd rather have Kinsler. Eddie Mayo. Ooh, you love that defense. Doesn't strike out. Now there's already two bids on him, so people are people are seeing what's what. No one's really gonna be surprised here. I wonder. This would be one where if he was ending sooner, I might be interested to try to snake him cheap. But he's probably not gonna reach that thirty nine ninety nine price. But he's he's gonna be higher than than what we're seeing here. So, I don't know. Probably going to pass. Oh, is this, is this the Tommy Herr that drove in over 100 runs with 8 homers? 1985. All right, I'm sorry, by the way. All right, the, I already know this is going to be another long video, even if I cut it. Even if I get, like, a second baseman in one more position, if I just keep it to three positions, it's still going to be long. Sorry. The worst. 1985, yeah. 110 ribbies. Eight homers. I love that. Elite base running. Poor defense, though. He avoids K's pretty well. I don't know. That could be a decent card. I mean, you're not going to get pop. Eh. Eh. I'll tell you what. We're going to do this because nobody's ending anytime soon. So... Oh, high pockets Kelly. Look at that pop. Four positions. Now he has bad eye and bad avoid Ks, but that power's so good. Who the hell's Buddy Meyer? I don't think Buddy Meyer's worth 6K. This person's wild, thinking like, hey, I can get this for him. No, you can't. A lot of Jeff Kent's out there in the market. Do any of them come in like really cheap? 1800. 1749. If there was one for like, I don't know, 1550 slash 1600 area, might be worth getting over Kinsler. Maybe. Eddie Abaticchio? Or Ed, excuse me. Excuse me, Ed. Eh, kind of blah. 90 sacrifice bunt, though. Kind of intrigued by this her. But, I don't know. He's not very good. If I'm sacrificing that kind of defense at second, I think I want some pop. You know, you can hide you can hide a, a mediocre to bad fielder at second base. But you, you usually trade that for some power. Fernando Vigna. Now, somebody's absolutely wild and think that they're going to get 1500 for him. I don't think you're going to find anybody impatient enough to do that. I'd be more inclined to do a bid and just see if I get him, I get him. If not, whatever. But it doesn't end for 20 hours. I don't know. 
Mariano Duncan's that bad defensively? Could have surprised me on that one. Could have won a bar bet. I don't know. I just had this notion in my head that he was better defensively. Bump Willis. Now that's a name. Speed and defense for old Bumpy. He like to go by old Bumpy. I doubt it. Nah. All right. I'm thinking Kinsler's still the leader in the clubhouse here. 2K is a decent outlay that I don't know if I want to do yet until I kind of look at the rest of uh, what's going on. Oh, let's look at the live. Let's also sort by end time real quick, too. Kevin Biggio ends in a minute and a half. Five positions, but not very good at any of them except for second base. Can take his walks. I'd be more inclined to put this on the bench, but I'd like to see that Kelly Johnson bid all the way through. Whoa, Cattell. Cattese. Now we're talking here. This seems like a good price. LeMayhew's pretty nice, but that's pretty expensive. You know... Between the 2000 for Albies, or excuse me, for Kinsler, 5Gs for Albies might actually be worth 3000 more. I know that's like 2.5x, but man, I don't know. What about Ice and These Fools? I'm a big Diaz fan. From MLB The Show, he was a beast. I'm glad they gave his ratings some juice. You know, here not just going off of what he did last year when it wasn't very good. He struggled a bit in a small sample. He's a prospect of some note, though, and I think it's worth having his uh, his ratings kind of reflect the fact that he's not a schlock. Kendrick could be a good bench bat too. Uh, this Cattell is even cheaper, but he doesn't end for four hours. Not even I'm going to take that long on this. What about Brandon Lau? A big Brandon Lau fan. He's just kind of solid everywhere, but he did strike out so much, man. That's just going to be hard to stomach. I don't think he's going to necessarily be that for his career. Like I, I think this year, if and when we play, he's going to improve that strikeout rate, but I don't know, man. I'm, I'm looking at Cattell here, and I'm thinking... I'm thinking... I'm thinking, y'all. I'm thinking Cattell is some really good bang for the buck. Love the switch hitter aspect as well. The defense isn't great, so we would keep him at second. I think that speed is unfair, by the way. I'm, I'm kind of curious on some of the stuff that they do with speed. Because uh, the one that really stuck out to me was Tyler O'Neill, who is the fastest player on the Cardinals, and he has like a 46 speed. So I don't know what's going on with that. I think that's a little bizarre, and I don't agree with it. Now, 38 minutes, I'm going to be awake. Should probably just see it through, try to get him on the cheap. Worst case, worst, worst case, somebody comes in and says, you know what, I'll just pay the 875. We pay a buck 25 more and just get him for a G. Is that worth trying to save? I don't know, 150 if we're doing like 725. Probably not, right? Maybe just save the 125. Off rip, get them for eight seventy five. Let's do this. Let's do this. I don't usually like the bid early, but we're doing it for the video. I'm gonna put in a seven twenty five. See if that puts us as the high bidder. If not, we swoop and get eight seventy five off rip. I know I said I was I was just gonna do the one. All right, all right. You know what? I just want to see what their bid is. I'm super stubborn. 
if you were going to go this high, why wouldn't you just pay 875? Because now you're risking losing it. And I'm obviously going to buy it despite you. I have to see what their bid was, though. I have to. I'm stubborn. Did you, like, really do, like, right below? What? I'm so confused. Did you say that you'd pay the 875? Do you not know how this works? It doesn't make any sense. What? What? What bid did they put? Yeah, I do. Screw that person. I don't understand that. What bid did they have in? That's so weird to me. Whatever, I got him. Suck it, Trebek. What? I'm so confused by that. None of that makes any sense. That's just really, really bizarre. But okay. Go off. We can sell Pulwacki now. What's he go for here? Here, I promise, I promised y'all a little bit shorter vid. This isn't that much shorter. It's about 46 minutes after our, uh, here. Let's sell Pulowiecki, which by the way, pretty good price for Pulowiecki. Let me go see what those prices were again. Find card and auction house. 249, I'll do them for 220. I'll do a 180, 220 too. 220. Those two, those two points are gonna get them sold for us. Eh, I gotta do more than that. Let's just do the 12 hours. Actually, you know what? I really want them to sell. I'll do that. I'll do 169, 200. So he's gone. And then this Tom Sizemore. I think I mentioned in the original video that I would maybe keep him around as a bench bat. But, eh. Did I say Tom Sizemore? That's the actor. It's Ted Sizemore. I think I said Tom. I'm a doofus. I like the avoid K, but that's really the only thing he's doing. We can find somebody else that I like, that I know more. Let's go back. What was his price again? Lowest is 95. We could probably get like 77 for him. So we'll do that. He got him. And Katizi for Reezy. All right, so the offense is starting to come together a bit here. We could tell third. Actually, you know what? We'll, we'll flip these two. We'll go a little bit more traditional on the, at the leadoff spot. Um, I mean, not he's not really... Well, he's fast in real life, but in the game he isn't. So it's not even that traditional necessarily. But um, we'll put Judge at three with JD at two. Not that you guys can't read that. Um, we'll put Brown here. Okay. Okay. So we'll stop there. Uh, so we got two more guys. We got Perez and Cattell. We still need third short, center right, and then some bench. I'm going to go ahead and record that like right now. But I just wanted to shorten it up for y'all. I try to be, you know what? I, I think I'll do like third and short, center and right, and then the whole bench. Because I do like to go through and really look at everything. So um, I'll tighten up the videos, but it's just going to be less getting done in each of them. Is that an, is that an okay trade-off? And then once we kind of get everything going with the squad and next week when we're in the league, um, we'll just kind of be reviewing a month or two months at a time, depending. If I, if I do one every day, then we'll review the month. If it's every other day, then we'll review the two months of gameplay, kind of figure out where we're at, see if there's any moves to be made, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But and we still have the whole pitching to do, by the way, as well. So that's several more videos. So, all right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you're new um, and you've been enjoying the content here. Don't forget, we're still going to have MLB The Show content. Um, I'm also going to take my no money team. This Don't forget, this is the $10 team. I have a no money squad that I'm accumulating all my points with, and we're going to buy that team. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to do a lot of the legwork 
beforehand on that team so that when I come on to the video for that, it's going to be more of the ch ch buying and check, buying and check, as opposed to kind of exploring the market the way we are with this one. All right, take care. Thanks.